A train has derailed in your hometown, releasing a toxic plume. How can radio help? Stick around, and we'll get right to it. That was the scenario for the simulated emergency test, or set, that I participated in last weekend. While the normal voice net was established and digital comms such as Winlink were also exercised, I wanted to try something different, something that would both challenge myself and be something unique to the group. So I decided to utilize APRS to give a visual representation of what was happening on the ground. Now this did require a pretty extensive loadout because I chose to do all of this without batteries and void of the internet. Now, the first challenge that I faced was I could not get into an APRS digipeter from inside the building, so this required me to set up a portable digipeter just outside. For this digipeter, I utilized a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, a FT65R HT, and a Digirig sound card as the interface. I then connected the radio to a roll-up J-Pole that was at the top of a TN-07 mask about 32 feet in the air and held in place with a drive-on mount. Once the digipeter was in place, the next thing I did was get a private network set up by utilizing a travel router that was powered by a small battery bank. Once my little private network was set up, I went ahead and started setting up the primary station. This included the Evolve laptop for the computer. I connected that to the ICOM 705, and I was running APRS with Direwolf. I was utilizing Yak to give me a graphical user interface. And in addition to that, I went ahead and kicked off web chat so that I would have two-way messaging capability as well from my primary station. The last piece of the puzzle included a second laptop running on a BioNO 3 amp hour battery where I had modified the Pi Display code to run on the x86 machine. This tied into one of the large screens in the EOC giving us a map that updated every 15 seconds of the events going on on the ground. Now you might be asking yourself, why would I want to set up an APRS station and go to all this trouble and display the map just to watch cars moving around on the map? Well, that wasn't at all what we were doing. We were using that map to drop objects onto. And these objects represented different things throughout the exercise. So first, remember this is a train derailment exercise. So we marked the exact location of the train derailment on the map. This not only gave us a marker on the map locally, but it also sent that out over RF. Now, during this exercise, I did avoid anything going into the internet, even though it was all clearly marked exercise. I didn't want to get anybody excited over something that they might be looking at on APRS.fi. So I restricted everything to only go out over RF and not be gated to the internet. But because it was going out over RF, that train object that I created with the uh, derailment message or derailment comment in it went out over RF and anybody with an APRS radio could receive that data and get the exact coordinates that I had plugged into the map. I also used an object to mark the groups that were in the field that we were trying to communicate with from the EOC. In addition to that, as the voice net was taking check-ins uh, in the early part of the exercise, I would take each of those stations that checked in and mark them on the map as well. Now, in this particular case, I was able to use the comments to give everyone a little bit of data about that particular station. So whether they were operating on emergency power or commercial power per se, uh, if they had HF capability or if they were limited to VHF and UHF, I could also drop that data in the comments. Again, that's being displayed on that large map in the EOC. Now, the reason we wanted to do this is let's assume the repeater failed for whatever reason. In this particular exercise, that probably wasn't going to be the case, but maybe this is a tornado 
or a hurricane where eventually the repeater runs out of battery power. Well, because you've got that large map with every check-in displayed on it, you can take a look and more or less get a decent idea of who can hear who. So maybe you've got a distant station that you want to get a message to, but you can't uh, contact them directly. You could look up at the map and get a visual representation of where everyone was located and who might between, be between you and that distant station that could relay a message over 2 meter simplex. Other things that we could utilize APRS objects for are maybe we want to mark road closures in the area of that train derailment, or maybe we want to mark which hospitals are operational and accepting patients. Maybe we want to mark shelters on the map. In that case, you could use the comments section to include maybe how many beds they have, if they were pet friendly or not, and if hot meals were going to be served. And that's just a few of the examples that come to the top of my head that we might want to display on that map. I'm sure you guys can think of others. But overall, this was a huge success. I was very pleased with the results of the way everything came out. Being able to pull regular APRS traffic in through the local Digipeter that I set up, that little portable Digipeter, and being able to mark locations of various things on the map and give more detailed information about it in the comments section proved to be a really, really cool tool that we could use in the event of a real emergency. Now, just because I was really pleased with the way everything went, don't think there weren't some glitches. I did have a few. For one thing, the laptop running the Pi Display software kept blinking out, and I couldn't find the setting in Linux to stop that screen from blinking. So that's something I need to dig into and get resolved. Also, I couldn't get a GPS signal with the ICOM 705 inside the EOC. So if I'd have needed that, that could have been another issue. Speaking of the 705, with it and the laptop, I was drawing about six, maybe 700 milliamps of power uh, each hour from that BioNO 3 amp hour battery. So it did last the entirety of the exercise, but I was right at the verge of losing that battery. Probably should have taken a bigger battery with me and used it instead of that 3 amp hour and just left the 3 amp hour as a backup if I needed it. And the last little glitch was I wasn't able to get into a Winlink gateway using 2 meters. I tried that with an HT and a roll-up J-Pole inside the EOC and it just wasn't enough. I could go out into the parking lot and get a connection if I needed to, but not from inside. I was able to successfully, though, send a peer-to-peer -peer message to the main EOC station. So we did test it both ways to verify that Pat Winlink was compatible with his Winlink RMS Express station. I hope you found today's information helpful. Be sure to leave us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.